What's up, my soldiers? Wobbly on and now this is the second time I'm recording this because the first time I was out of focus. Oh, I love technology. Anyways, this is 10 things you never thought about Air Force BMT. Number one is how fast it actually goes by. Now, a lot of people don't think about this. I didn't really think about it until I got there. It's, you know, I'm going to be here for two months. I mean, it's not that long, but it's going to be a while. The best way to make a time go by is to take your BMT SG and make eight blocks on the side where the pages are and then write zero through eight on each block. Then every Sunday when you pass into a new week, you just highlight each block. That way you get some type of form of like progression. You know you're getting through. You know one day you're going to finish. Number two is that I really use the upper weekers as motivation. The upper weekers are the people who are just about to graduate. I remember my zero week. I'm standing in formation. We are doing something and our MTI is teaching us something outside. Our MTI is teaching and behind my MTI marches a flight that's about to graduate BMT. They're marching by. They're in their blues. Their MTI is in their blues. They look good. They're sinking Jody's. They're marching on point they look sharp pretty much that just motivated me to graduate BMT I'm standing here in my sneakers I know that I'm a zero weaker but I know that someday I'm gonna reach that point I'm gonna graduate number three is how creative you're gonna get I didn't really think about this but when you go to BMT you're gonna actually use a lot of things and things that they aren't really supposed to be used for like your t-shirt for example you're gonna use your t-shirt to clean like all of the latrine you're gonna cut it up you're gonna use it to wipe stuff down you're gonna use your socks. You're gonna use some of your extra socks to slide them onto the end of a broom and then like sweep up all the dust. You're gonna use your flip flops. You're gonna use those to dust out all the dust from under your bed. You're gonna use all these different things that you never thought of before and you're gonna get real creative. Everybody who graduated BMT is a qualified MacGyver, I guarantee you. Number four is how much BMT is run by trainees. Pretty much everything has something to do with a trainee cleaning it or maintaining it or setting up for something. When you're in your third week, or at least our flight, when we were in our third week, they selected like 10 people to go out to the parade field, which is where you march when you graduate. And our job was basically to set up all the chairs, all the ceremony to clean up, do all this other stuff for the graduating class. And then when we graduated, we had third weekers. So it's kind of like a pay it forward type of thing. And a lot of things in BMT happen that way. Whenever you go eat, there's going to be a certain flight from anywhere in BMT that's working in your chow hall. That flight is going to be on what's called kitchen patrol. And sometimes your flight might be selected for it. And basically your flight will wash dishes, they'll wipe off the tables, they'll be washing all the trays. And they're going to be on a 12 hour shift, basically just maintaining and cleaning up the chow hall. Now number five, this has to do with getting kicked out of BMT. I always thought that you get kicked out because you weren't in shape or you like screwed up some type of way which I mean I guess that can get you kicked out but that's not why a lot of people get kicked out the main reason why people get kicked out of BMT is because they get sick or injured basically a lot of people they fracture their legs they fracture their uh, hips they break something they twist something they get sick they get pneumonia or the flu and a lot of people who don't report pre-existing conditions like say you broke your leg when you were a kid and you didn't tell your recruiter about it those are the people who will have like reoccurring injuries and then they'll get kicked out which is why they make such a big deal deal about it at MEPS to like tell them but I mean lots of people don't. Number six, how much time you spend in class? I would say about 75 to 80 percent of the t your like awake hours is spent sitting in a chair, looking at a whiteboard or a projector or something, and an MTI is teaching you about some type of subject. The hardest part about going to class is just staying awake. You don't take any tests, you don't take any quizzes, they don't really ask any questions. They pretty much just teach you, and if you have a question, then ask one. But really, you, everybody's just quiet. Drink water. If you get tired, stand up in the back. Number seven is the value of being alone. You pretty much miss out on. All of that when you're at BMT. You're always going to be with a wingman, you're going to be with an MTI, you're going to be with your flight. These are the people, the same 50 people that you take showers with, eat, poop, sleep, drink, because you're going to be drinking lots of water and you're just with these people all the time. And you don't realize until you get to tech school and you get that first moment alone, you're just like, this is kind of weird. I haven't been alone in about two months. It's just strange. And you kind of get that right back. You kind of get that joy of closing a door and just having a moment to yourself even when you go to the bathroom or the latrine at bmt you're always going to have your wingman with you and if it's at night then your wingman doesn't have to come with you but you know that there's still ec monitors standing outside of the bathroom door and you know that you just aren't alone number eight is how much you'll have uh, attention to detail attention to detail is just like how observant you are and like your situational awareness and just what's going on around you. Now anytime, if I have like a string or something on my shirt, I have to like rip it off, like it cannot be there. You're gonna be a little paranoid after you graduate, but just a little bit, it kinda wears off. You still have that situational awareness, but it's not the same as BMT. Number nine is how much you rely on other people to succeed at BMT. Basically, everything on BMT is a task that an MTI is gonna give you, and they're gonna say, 
you need to do this and you need to do it with everybody else as well. Almost nothing is going to be just you. There's always going to be somebody else tied to your situation. You're definitely going to have to rest on your other wingman or your other people in your flight to help you succeed and build up your teamwork in your flight. And this brings me to number 10, my last thing, is how much you're going to hate your flight members when you're done. Because the hardest part about BMT is dealing with your flight members. It's ironically that's how you you have to work together to succeed but you're gonna like butt heads all the time some flights they work together well they have good leadership and things just turn out right but other flights they don't our flight had problems until the last day i mean there was some camaraderie like some people were friends some people weren't it was that understanding but there was always kind of like a rift between our flight it wasn't until like the last couple weeks till we got it together and we started like kicking butt but a lot of flights they have problems with their uh, flight members, but you gotta work through it. You know you gotta deal with these people, so why fight them? But hey guys, that's the 10 things that you didn't think about BMT. Hope you guys like this video. Make sure you subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.